Welcome back to NFR Podcast, and today we have a massive video because we'll be ranking every single Travis Scott song, all 97 of them, starting from Al Faro all the way to Utopia, and including the Lucy's that he's dropped on streaming platforms. And of course, in this video, we'll be listing off our top 10 Travis songs. But if you want to see us go in depth with those top 10 songs, we actually did an audio podcast on those songs specifically. Just hit the link in the pinned comment if you guys want to access that. It's available on Spotify. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere that you guys get your podcasts. But this is a very interesting episode because yes, it is. we had to negotiate, we had to compromise for placements. It wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy because Lou and I have a combined list today. And of course, you and I have different opinions, should I say, about Travis Scott's music. But, you know, Lou and I got a good 97 ranking, 97 songs. This is massive, yeah, bro. This is an event. Lot, we spent a lot of time on this list. And you know what? As much as I compromised, I feel like we have really solid picks. Absolutely. Today. And by the way, no collab albums included. Like, yeah. really just strictly his solo material. But let's start off at n- number 97. This is a huge one because we're calling this the worst Travis Scott song. And yeah. It's, it's Dance on the Moon. 97 is going to be Dance on the Moon. Do you think this is a product of it kind of being the world, like the worst off of Al Farrell? Because in your opinion, in my opinion, that's his worst project. It's still a really solid mixtape, but this is easily the worst song. Yeah, the this project. is a dull party anthem, and you got like Theopolis London on the hook, but you really definitely wanted Kid Cudi because you have the whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, he wanted Cudi for this. He just couldn't get him for this one, but they end up working together later on. But next up at number 96. Another Al Faro song. You're going to see a lot of Al Faro within this section of the video, you know, and it's just a testament to how he's kind of built out his catalog. And, you know, once you start getting to stuff like DBR and Rodeo and Birds, and Astro, Utopia, like that's where the big placeholders are going to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. But one. yeah, this song is like the musical embodiment of a bad trip to me. Um, it's, it's really not that great. Um, number, so that was, that was n- number 96 with Naked. Number 95, Chaz Interlude. I mean, not much to say here. Kind of an uneventful interlude on Al Faro, right? Minute and a half. Nothing more to say. Um, number 94. This is going to be kind of a hot take, but I think that a lot of people do agree with this. It's going to be first take off of Birds in the Trap sing McKnight. Um, you and I have spoken about this song at lengths in different videos, and especially when we do our breakdowns of Birds. Um, I do feel like it's the weakest song off of the track list. Um, I'm not a big fan of his melodies or vocals off of the track itself, and it's kind of aged poorly. When I look back at that track list, yeah. it might be for some people, but Lou and I have it at the bottom of the ranking. Way too much reverb on yeah. that opening verse, in my opinion. But number 93 is going to be 16 Chapels. Um, one of the most forgettable Travis songs, in my opinion, and clearly a Kid Cudi rip, to be honest. Number 92, though, Topia Twins. Yeah, so this is going to be a hot take on the episode. This is a hot take. This one's a hot take, but Lou, you guys know how we feel about the song. Lou and I really don't fuck with it. The whole thing of jumping on a jet ski. One of his jet- worst hooks. Yeah, laziest. It's, just, it, it's not, well, regardless if it's lazy or not, I just feel like, especially the way that it comes off, it's kind of like... It's a bit of a useless party banger, if I'm being completely honest with you. And even at that, I know people enjoy the Rob 49 feature. I'm happy for him that he got it, but it just doesn't click for me. And I'm really not invested into the song. Absolutely, because we love Travis Scott for his individualism, and you're getting the most cliche trap song on this. But let's move on to number 91, which is back. And um, yeah, I mean, people sometimes say Travis and Metro have never missed. They, They missed here. Okay, so this would be the worst song on DBR then. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Let's keep going on with this. Number 90, Del Resto. This was another pick where I think it was easy for us. You I think know? you felt strongly about this one. I felt like, ah, I could be a bit higher up, but no. Beyonce's performance is decent. I just feel like the song doesn't amount to anything. It builds up and there's no climax. I just feel like you should have put this on Renaissance. Yeah. You know, like it really doesn't fit Utopia whatsoever. It doesn't like doesn't fit in his soundscape or in his wheelhouse. Um, and you're just getting like Renaissance Beyonce coming through. I think it's uneventful. So I have it at 90, number 89, Drive. Um, how do you feel about this track? That's another placement that we have here. Yeah, a weaker track. I mean, a lot lot of uh, Houston inspiration going on to DJ Screw and um, to Zero and Lil Flip with some interpolations, but not memorable whatsoever. Um, number 88, K-pop. I mean, this had no business on being on Utopia, bro. And it just, it sounded like the most forced attempt for a hit by Travis, maybe ever, in my opinion. Well, right? yeah, absolutely. I just think that it was misplaced on the album. Again, sort of a situation like Del Resto, like Topia Twins. Those songs do weigh down the track list a bit. And as you said, it's kind of an attempt to get like some good radio streams. I mean, it did its job. It was a massive song for Travis. Yeah, I'm but happy he took, got his he took the back it. seat on like a lead single uh, for an uh, album. Absolutely, you know? but that it was disappointing for the album experience. It was kind of nice though because then you get into the album and like you get all the meat there. But yeah. 
you know, just for the most part, I do think that it's one of the lower ranking songs in his catalog. Number 87, Metal Creek. Um, this is another song off of Al Faro. Um, how do you feel about it? It's the intro, right? Off officially of the his worst intro yeah, on our list. Yeah, officially his worst intro. Um, it's just, it's a bit of a weird track. I do like the ghoulish looped vocals at the beginning, but you have like a weird abrupt switch to like a skit with his parents yelling at him to come downstairs and you're like, it's cool. What's going on? Yeah, um, no, it's cool. I'm it's okay. cool for world building, it's I guess. It's cool for but world building, yeah. It was a bit I mean, of a like, weird not, transition. Yeah, it's definitely one of the weaker songs in his catalog. Um, I will say this, though. You definitely hear the Yeezus and like Kid Cudi influence like early, early on in Al Faro, you know? Which is fine because he helped develop the Yeezus sound, so that's okay. Um, Absolutely. Next up, though, 86, we have Zombies. Um, so another DBR placement on this? Yeah, another weak track, in my opinion. I mean, it sounds like he's sort of operating his own cult. It has a very dark energy and mood to it, but it's a sleepy song for me. It is a bit of a sleepy song. Um, All right. Number 85, Flying High. Um, this is Rode Rodeo's lowest moment, for sure. That being said, though... You've always defended this song. It, it's grown on me because of that Toro y Moi bridge. I feel like that part of the song is really strong. It's cool. It's nothing yeah. too crazy, but easily the worst song off of Rodeo. Let's keep going on with this. Next one is going to be Bands with Meek Mill, um, another Al Farrell placement. So you guys are going to see that we're going to run through Al Farrell quite easily throughout this episode, for at least for like the half of it. And then we're going to start getting into more and more stuff. But yeah, Bands with Meek Mill, I mean, standard trap banger with Meek Mill, nothing too crazy. Um, not much creativity going on, if you Meek ask me. Meek showed up, though. I have to give it to me. Yeah, it's just like when you have to compare it to the rest of his catalog... It's like you wouldn't necessarily expect this, and you could tell that like it was early on in his career, and he was still trying to figure out his sound, or you know, trying to really make a push into the mainstream. Yeah, the, so. the song definitely sounds dated. Um, but at number eighty three, we have Sloppy Toppy. Um, this was a song that I loved when I was a kid, and now I go back to it, and it's just it's kind of hard to listen to. You know, I like the drop on the song itself, but like. The way Travis says, ah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very chaotic it's, song. It's, it's a very chaotic song itself. Like you really have to be in the mood to bump sloppy toppy. But regardless, though, the Migos feature does what it does. Takeoff did his thing. Shout out yeah. to Takeoff. Eighty-three, um, number eighty-two, love. So, how do you feel about this? It's cool. I mean, it's a song that was made during the DBR days. It's all right. I mean, the hook isn't too strong. Like the whole, you know, love me, love me not type of thing. I don't know. Not my thing. All right, number 81, Bad Mood, Shit on You. Um, one of the stronger tracks, actually, off of Al Faro. I'm not going to lie to you, especially the second half of uh, shit, on, uh, shit on You. When we were having the conversation, you were actually a big fan of this song. I was like, okay, I could maybe place it even a bit lower, but I kind of threw you a bone with this one. I was okay with it. Well, you make it seem like I put it at number 10, bro. It's at number 81. You threw me a bone. But yeah, okay. <laughs> we had a second half school. Um, next up, number 80, we have Never Catch Me, which was on the deluxe version of of rodeo um you have classic lines like i can shit all day diaper nice <laughs> all right never catch me number 80 number 79 and um, that's where we're gonna have who what so this is gonna be actually our first astroworld placement it is like astroworld did not see the light of day until yeah like fucking 17 songs in almost more or less yeah, yeah that's I pretty mean, crazy a cool trap song i mean i do don't, i don't like the fact that like quavo and takeoff were kind of sidelined they were given like the last 30 seconds of the song um when it feels like their song it feels like a culture leftover to me again it's one of those songs in like a travis album where you're kind of like i can maybe do without it off of the track list it's easily the weakest song off of astro yeah. let's keep going on number with 78 god's country off of utopia this was a you pick Oh yeah, bro. This like, I'm U still pick. not a fan of the creepy like la 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 la. No, does does not pick. belong on the if instrumental. If this was my list, ladies and gentlemen, and my okay, why would gonna... you have had it? Tell me. I would have it like maybe in like the 65 to like 55 range. If I'm in the being... 55 range, 65... above songs like am I? Hey, hey, I don't hey, want to spoil hey, it. Hey, hey, fuck off. When Don't we get anything. there, I'm gonna remember. Y yeah, what you I, said. I see some songs on here that I'd probably put it in front. I'm not. Gonna and he lie should have kept a Kanye West verse on the song. That's another L with it. All right, next up, let's go on to number 77, highest in the room. So it's a pretty decent song. It wasn't anything too crazy. It's a bit uneventful. It's a bit sleepy. It's kind of like wallpaper music, you know. There's nothing really uh, distinct about it. Like watching uh, watching paint dry, as you would say. Yeah, I mean it's cool though. You get like the little like Halloween spooky alien sort of like the, the sins by Mike Dean like, at the end. They're nice. Yes. Those sins. The outro is easily the best part oh, of the yeah. song in my opinion. Because like we're taking off in a spaceship. All right. Um, number seventy six. This was a you pick. If you're going to start to point the fingers at me, yeah. Antoine at Circus Maximus at this spot. So I tell did. me why. Well, I mean, you're always the one that, oh, it's a ripoff. Oh, it's this. Oh, well, I mean, it's I actually never said that. Oh, I never said it's a ripoff for it, this. It, no, what I'm saying is that like this feels like just like a second variation of Black Skinhead, if I'm being completely It is, but, but Travis has done that in the past where he's taken an, an existing beat and rapped over it. Yeah. 
you know? But that's what I'm trying to tell you, though, is that Al Farrell has a lot of that, and, like, it's placed lower in our track list. I feel like you're very selective with what type no, of No, because you to let you know something, it's one thing to rap over the same instrumental as another artist, but to form your sound around another artist's sound, that's where I knock off points for Al Farrell because you hear the clear Kanye and Cuddy influence. Yeah, but you just said, like, he kind of, like that's kind of his sound as well. He brought that to the table for No, but later on, he developed, like, a mesh of those well, sounds and to, built his own well, well, that's what I'm trying to say, though, is that you're getting that on Utopia. You're not getting that off of a DBR, you know? He's later in his catalog. He's 10 years into his career. I just feel like, at least for the track listing, it's a cool song. Don't get me wrong, but come on. It's nothing too crazy. But All let's right. keep going on with this. Number 75, Escape Plan. Um, kind of a cookie cutter song, maybe, for Travis Scott, if I'm being honest with you. Nothing too crazy. I mean, run of the mill. Uh, doesn't do anything too crazy. The whole escape plan hook itself <laughs> wasn't too crazy as well. So um, the, the, I have a place the, the song kind of goes hard, but it's kind of a loop. Very repetitive beat, very repetitive lyrics. It just sounds like... Another day at the office for Travis. I was very happy that this didn't make the album, if I'm yeah, being honest. Yeah, absolutely. With you. But number 74, Blocka La Flame. This Sick is a banger. remix of Pusha T's song, Blocka. Um, I like this song. I do like this song. I fuck the energy with it. is fucking crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. But number 73, Franchise. I mean, first of all, the franchise remix with Future was much better. Yes, it was. Um, I do love the production on this song. That's one thing yeah. I have to give it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're, you're stepping into like 3024. And you have like these alarm sounds. It sounds like a prison escape. Very cinematic production. I do like Travis's verse on it. Eh, it's a bit boring to me, to be honest. I mean, even MIA, I know she always gets knocked for the feature. It's not a highlight for performance, even though she is a talented artist. So yeah, franchise 73. All right. Next up, Watch at 72. I feel like this is going to be a hot take. People love Watch. People do love Watch. But I mean, his catalog is so stacked. You know, I really fuck with this song too. I really liked it when it dropped. I still think it's aged pretty cool, too. I'm happy that it didn't make Astro World. Actually, you know what? I would take Watch, and I'd probably subs it out for, like, who what? Maybe. Oh, definitely not. I mean, well, technically, we would have it in the list, but... Um, no, I no, no. I'm saying for, like, the track listing itself, for the sequencing. You, maybe. If, like, if you were Travis, you wouldn't take out who what, and you wouldn't, like, just slot in. I'd leave them off, like, both of them. I'd leave both of them off. Watch could be cool, though. It plays into the theme of the album and has that sort of, like, high energy, like... Anyways, whatever. Know, it, sounds like, gonna... it sounds like I'm playing Angry Birds when I hear that beat. Um... Next up, though, Hell of a Night at 71. This might be a hot take because this is a lot of people's favorite song off of Al Faro, Kylie Jenner being one of them. Um, this is where I, I wanted this to be a lot higher. But Lou was like, yeah, there's nothing much going on with the song. So I was. this is one I wasn't going to convince you on. No. And I, and I spoke to him for like a good amount of time. Why would you have put it, though? How much higher up? I'll ask you the same question. Again, probably around 55 to 50. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you some it's songs insane. that I think are better. Like, example, like... This is not a spoiler because you guys automatically know this is going to be higher. Like example, like an A team, I think it's a better song. Okay, than but for example, the one that we have one above, let's get to it. Number seventy, Yosemite. Is it better than Yosemite? I feel like it's a better song than Yosemite. Oh, that's enough. Nice. So wait, hold on. You're going to start defending Yosemite all of a sudden when you've been trashing that song for like our entire career on the podcast, bro? We're you, like, oh, you, you well, now uh, vocals, you can't hear them. This is where you get <laughs> at to jumping and reaching to conclusions. I have Yosemite at seventy, bro. How is that me fucking praising well, it like it, it's uh, it's the fucking best well, song well, of you're, all time? You're asking, you ask me, you're like, oh, well, do you think it's better than Yosemite? I do think it's better than Yosemite, but you decided to put it over there so it's not my problem but number 69 mia this was another kind of easy pick between us we both agreed that you know this was a good range very it, catchy so. hook catchy hook pretty cool for his catalog number 68 okay all right i love the schoolboy q feature um i don't think it's the strongest song off a of rodeo but it's definitely one of my most played from like when i was a kid it feels like a travis trying to make like a three six mafia song like it has that deep southern roots influence it's also very dark you know on the production side of things as well and you get a breakout performance from SZA. like who would have expected that in, in 2015 that's very true it was a huge moment and is this not better than hell of a night no that's an l i i don't think so um, right. number 67 guidance a lot of people don't fuck with this song but i like it man I think there's a nice groove to it. It feels kind of special for his like catalog as well. Um, this is kind of like a remix where I'm like, okay, you know, because people are like, oh, well, he's stealing a song. No, it's credited. Like you guys could go through the album credits, like the original artist that made the production. They're there on but it. Yeah, so. it's Travis experimenting going to a dance hall sound, and I appreciate the experimentation. That's 67. Number 66, uh, Piss on Your Grave off a of rodeo. By the way, do you feel like this is where the songs are going to start getting stronger and stronger and stronger? Because like, I, I don't really see anything that's getting weak now. I feel like 60 and above, like it's heaters, bro. It's, it's pure, fucking heaters. Yeah, it's so right now, there, there's still some whatever tracks. Um, uh, but yeah, Piss on Your Grave. Do you think like most people have this like higher on their tr like track list rankings for rodeo, or do you think it's maybe in the mid tier? 
for a lot of people. Probably like, in the probably in the middle tier. You yeah. know, it's not often you hear people saying this is like the best song off a of rodeo, mm-hmm. but um it's cool, you know, it's Kanye and Travis going on that Yeezy sound, giving you more industrial type of hip hop. I like the guitar riff. It's cool. It is. All um, right, number sixty five, basement freestyle. This is another fan favorite, you know, at least for us. When we were younger, we were fucking junking this song off of DBR. So do you think that maybe this could have been a bit higher now looking at the list? Maybe. You know what's interesting is when you listen back to the song, it sounds like through the flows and cadence that he's kind of sounding like Wiz Khalifa. I don't know if you pay attention yeah, close you, you enough. Think so? You get a for the I'm first have time to go back and in listen. Travis's catalog. It's like, is this Wiz right now? You think but so? It, nonetheless, this is kind of like his backseat freestyle in the sense that he's very braggadocious. He's talking his shit. Um, instrumental bangs. Shout out to Me- uh, to Lex Luger and Metro. But it's a cool song. It is. It absolutely is. Um, Sixty four is Parasail. Sort of feels like an interlude off of Utopia. It really is. The um, Young Lean feature was great for the album itself. I really like the feature. Um, people sometimes find it a bit sleepy for the track list itself, but it's still, I'm a fan of the track and I think it's a good placement. Nice but auto crooning on the hook. Absolutely. 63. Great. Um, you were imminent on having this a lot higher. I love this. Cause this is one of those songs where you have Travis, um, contrasting two moods. The song sounds very uplifting and sunny, it but does. thematically it's about him and his friends and how they went on different paths and how one of his friends got locked up. Like it's a very dark song lyrically, but I just love the, the contrast of, thematics and sonics so um interesting they should have been a bit higher for sure there's a better song than uh, than hell of a night that's for damn sure all um, right number 62, 62 18 classic banger for us man i feel like it's one of the most slept on songs in his entire catalog for sure just because it never really released um as an official song by the way every single time i used to open like let's say carplay on my on my uh on my car, this would be the first song that I would play because the A and the dash. Ah, I see. Uh, and it was like the first song. So alphabetically a ranked yeah. first. A uh, little fun fact. I'm not sure if that ever happened Actually, to anyone. Don't, don't numbers rank before uh, before letters? I'm not. I wonder how that works. But anyways. It would just be the first song that would always play yeah, on the yeah. Apple CarPlay. Uh, regardless, though, sick fucking banger from Travis. Gives you like that Birds in the Trap, Sigma McKnight sort of Travis. 2016, 2017 sort of Travis. So it'll place at 62. Number 61, NC te- NC 17. Okay, so I think this is where we're going to have some fucking serious songs now. Well, I don't think NC 17 qualifies as that for me. It's like 60 and above. NC 17 is cool. Not huge in the choppy deliveries. The 21 Savage performance isn't the most You don't like the monster impressive. sounds in like the song as well? Like That's pretty cool. That, th- that aspect of it's cool, though. All right, so now let's go to loose cutoff point, apparently, on this whole fucking list. 5% tin. Talk to me about why not 61, but now 60 is the cutoff point for this list, Lou. Um, just one of the craziest, like, menacing productions that you'll find in Travis's entire catalog. The ominous keys really give you that dark atmosphere as well. And, again, love the, the southern influences from Goody Mob to DJ Screw that you find within the song. It's just a slapper, bro. All right, let's keep going on with this. Number 59 is going to be Sweet Sweet. Super underrated song for the Birds in the Sing, uh, Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight track list. Um, I'm a big fan of the hook on this. I love the quick flows and paces for the verses. Um, I love the eight oh weights on the song as well. I'm I'm really happy with the placement. I think getting it like sixty above for me was uh, was a good placement. Yeah, it's uh, like you said, amazing hook, and I feel like even him experimenting with like the Creole accent, it was it was different for him. It was, it a was nice, fire. It was a nice song. But next up, fifty eight uptown. Um, this sounds like a celebration in hell. Like, that's the best way I could represent a this celebration song. Celebration in hell, absolutely, because you, you have these triumphant horns. Gives you that celebratory, triumphant but mood. Like why in hell? Because it's juxtaposed by like these nightmarish, like sort of elements sonically. So it's kind of a balance of like celebratory, but also very dark. Um, so I'm usually a fan of your analogies, but like I don't know, that one was like I was okay. That, that was an I, I, if I had to if I had to like grade your analogy. I would give it like a mid rating. On our I, I, it's too bad I couldn't give less of a fuck. Um, but I do love Trav's <laughs> energy on the song, right? I guess. It brings the energy in. Yeah, and listen, ASAP Ferg on it, bro. Shout out fucking ASAP <laughs> Ferg. All right, number 57, wake up. Yeah. I was gunning for this higher. And um, you decided to be an asshole with me and said, no, we're not doing that. We're not going to get it higher. So what made you, what stopped you from even getting it maybe like five or 10 placements higher? You know? I don't know. The only like captivating or like, distinct element of the song is like that awesome guitar riff that you get besides so, that it's sort of like it's basic you get a cool weekend hook there's nothing else going it's on a for cool me. weekend hook he says yeah it's a cool weekend hook it's not uh, an all-time great weekend hook is it no but i would say it's definitely but like uh, you see like i'm looking at this and there's going to be wonderful coming up very soon and like wonderful is a better song. I, I think this is a better song especially with the guitar riff inside like 
I like it because it's also like one of the more melodic tracks off of Astro World. Anyways, number fifty six, Wasted. Um, this is another big song for me off of Rodeo. One of my most replayed as of late, actually. I've been going really. Back. You were kind of saying that you're like, no, I've been, you're I've a been bit fucking, shaky on it. I've been going back, man. I've been going back. It's a nice fucking song. It really is. Um, I love how the song starts off with these fucking crazy flutes, and then after that, you get in and like, it's crazy because it's Juicy J that comes in, right? And that kind of like. Is that yeah? I think it's considered like a bridge within the song where he just starts fucking yapping, and then yeah, you have like a Pimp C sample as well, and this song like perfectly captures the feeling of like disorientation. Like you have that Travis slurred, drugged out sort of sound. It's uh, it's all about setting up atmosphere. Okay, hold on. So it wasn't Juicy J talking on that song then. Well, Juicy J has a feature on the song. No, no, I know he has a feature as a verse, but I always thought it was him. Like, he had that, like, little interlude in the track where, like, it kind of stopped. That's Pimp C. Fuck, I actually... Hey, thanks, man. I never knew that. Absolutely. Fire. All right, let's um, keep going 55, on 55, wonderful. So, yeah, it was placed two above Wake Up. It's not a big fucking deal. It isn't a big deal, but I um, still have Wake Up over Wonderful. Yeah. Number 54, Outside. This was the OG Travis and 21 Savage collaboration. Simple banger. I mean, I think it... Hasn't really lost its appeal over time. It hasn't. Um, and yeah, some clever bars from 21. I enjoy it. All right. Let's keep going on with this. I believe we are at 53. This is going to be Sirens. So we're going to start seeing a lot of the upper echelon tracks off of Utopia make a push now within this list. Um, so do you think that this should have been maybe a bit higher? That's now? what I was going to say. Like in, in the context of this list, like listen, it's ranked at number 53, but it feels low. You think it feels like too low? Like, 53 feels well for as good of a song as this is. Like, this song instrumentally is wild, bro. It sounds like you're one of the fucking circus. I know, know, but even looking at what we have from, like, the 50 to 30, what, what the fuck is this going to, like, go in front of? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, no, even I, look, I feel you. Okay, look at this number 52 selection. Quintana Part 1. That is one of the biggest fucking bangers from Travis Scott's early catalog. Like, there is no doubt. The Wally feature is incredible. I absolutely love this song. I love all the transitions within the track as well. Um, I love the high voltage energy of it. It's it's a classic with like it's a fan classic if I should say that within his uh, within Man, his. Catalog. I'm waiting on Quintana Part Three, bro. He has to do it. He has yeah, to he has fucking to, do yeah, it. Yeah, he has to do the trilogy. Yeah, he has, he has to, to, to the complete trilogy. it. Um, but all right, number fifty one. This is I know. Um, very simplistic trap beats. Some nice keys being rang throughout it. Um, to me, this is like really, truly some of Travis's best, most infectious melodies that he's ever brought to you music. You know what's really cool about this song, too, is being able to watch it live and being able to see it, you know, performed in live setting. We saw it on It's a Blur tour and we saw it at the Circus Maximus tour. And it's crazy because you're, you're watching the crowd just sing it word for word and like everyone is absolutely engaged into it I, I never would have expected it to be like the biggest song off of Utopia which it is now but I know it's uh no pun intended eh yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, but yeah 51 I know now number 50 we're into the top 50 this is really the upper echelon of Travis music we have pornography the intro off of um rodeo and it's interesting because i've always looked at comment sections whenever we talk about rodeo or whenever we talk about let's say the track list and people are always kind of split on this song right it's either people think that it's the best song off of rodeo or people think that it's a bit overrated so like where do you stand with it you not know? overrated bro you have yeah. ti's not narration what i love too is the vocal effects because travis comes in sounding like fragmented and then it's like he's slowly spawning into place he's he's slowly sort of coming and appearing into the rodeo world. It's it's really well done. Um, and yeah, I like how you go from crooning to hardcore rapping as well. Nice transition. But 49, Coordinate. So this was a song where when we revisited this list, right? Because we did our first draft of the list maybe um, a couple of days before this recording. And then when we came back to it, you were like, man, I think this is too low. And then I go back and I listen to the song over again. And I'm like, you're fucking right. Maybe we did fuck up on this one. So what made us put this into the top 50 rather than like this included right because it made the 49 spot i mean it just it has this eeriness but also this catchiness to it i love the black youngster intro and you asked me once in a tiktok like what's travis's most underrated song this was my answer yeah this is my answer but it doesn't have that many streams but like the sequencing of the ad libs are perfect here the club synths, everything about it it there's not much wrong with this song there isn't really isn't all right number 48 till further notice um, this was a song that I believe had gotten leaked. It got leaked. It got before, leaked. It got leaked before Utopia dropped. And I think it was only like, what, a month or two before the album. And um, I was just so surprised to see this on the track list because I'm like, it's too fucking good. Maybe like they're going to keep it off now because like it had surfaced. Maybe they wanted to keep it as a surprise. And lo and behold, it makes the track listing itself. So what's your favorite part about the song? Favorite part? I mean, 
James Blake. Oftentimes when James Blake and Travis collab, he ends up being my favorite part just because the singing is angelic and he just he sounds like a tortured soul trying to get out of like a black hole, you know? And also the fact that like they're talking about it being the end of a relationship coming as the last song was very fitting it to was. be placed there. It sequence. was, absolutely. Great outro. But let's keep going on with this. Um, number 47 is Lose, all right? So this is going to be a controversial take, but this is a big favorite of Lose and Eyes. And like, I just, I love the, the thought that goes into this song. Travis kind of evaluating his career and talking about how he has to watch his step because every single, you know, thing that he does could absolutely tear everything apart because he has a lot to lose. And it's just one of those songs that I feel like with every single listen keeps growing on. Me, backwards. You know? I've been living backwards. <laughs> like just yeah, when he gets crazy. into that mode and it's like more of the, 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 yeah. the chill sound, it's uh, it's all I need to be put at ease when listening to, uh, to the song. Um, but 46, this is Upper Echelon. This was the song that a lot of people heard from Travis as their first ever mm-hmm. Travis song, of course, being featured in the GTA 5 soundtrack. This is an epic banger. I mean, Travis really like gave the song his all, bro. It's Loki the first time I ever heard Travis. Me too. I was uh, 13 years old playing GTA 5. And you hear this fucking banger and you're like, what is going on? What is going on? And I, I haven't turned back since. I really haven't turned back since. I think it's the since. first sighting of the, the straight up ad libs as well. You Iconic think so? Iconic moment for that. Going through like his discography, I'm pretty sure. Like the way it's sequenced in like oh, Al Faro, I'm pretty sure it's the first uh, the first sighting of it, yeah. Pretty Monumental crazy. song. Um, absolutely love it. But 45, we have Fiend, which... An important moment in an affair. Important, <laughs> super crucial moment. Our most iconic <laughs> reaction to any fucking song ever. Um, the creation of the backshot <laughs> memes, all of that shit <laughs> happened with this fucking monumental banger. Fuck, and I wish you put it a bit higher just for the reasons. This beat is electric, bro. It is. It's insane. It is. Absolutely. That that dark vocal sample in the background just makes a, a beautiful um, aesthetic for it. I, I just, I really enjoy when I, whenever I get into it. And like, what's interesting is that I believe it was, was it the first time we heard the deep Cardi boys? It was. It was the, the, the debut of it. Yeah. And you were kind of like split on it. You're like, no, I'm not fucking with it. And I'm like, are you serious? So how do you feel about it all this time later? Has it grown on you? Could you I mean, finally say it's it's all right? I, I think it's grown on me because I've enjoyed the later performances mm. of his use of it. On this song, like, again, I wasn't used to it. But even listening to the verse now, like, it's not his best ever performance with the yeah, deep voice. Yeah, that's very true. But that being said, this is a stadium anthem. Anytime we've heard this song performed live so many fucking times. And I don't know if any other song right now would get a Travis crowd as hyped as this one. Absolutely. Um, but number 44 is going to be Lost Forever. And this is interesting because before this song came out, we had the leaked version, which only had the first half of the beat. And when we were speaking to each other about Lost Forever, we were saying how this was probably going to end up being a top 10 Travis song. And now it's at 44. So, so I, wait, I, wait, I, like, explain me from your point of view why it's landed here. You're gonna give it to me. Eh? You're gonna pass the ball to me now. Eh? You want me to say it? I, I have my own view on it. I just want to hear yours. <laughs> yeah, you want to hear mine? Eh? You want me to tell you mine first? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Fuck. <laughs> I, I know your view on this. Yeah, I guess all all this time later, I could say that like they should have probably kept the Thank production you. the same. Thank you. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good of a production. Um, as much as I'm a big fan of the Alchemist, like Beat Switch, still a phenomenal song. Don't get me wrong. It's just that. That OG production at the beginning, pff, you can't get better. Than moves that. mountains. That yeah, beat absolutely. moves fucking mountains. That is a bro. crazy fucking song to bump. Absolutely. absolutely. And like you hear, get to hear West Side Gun over like boom bap instrumentals all the time. But to get him to hear to, mm-hmm. to get him over that sort of psychedelic, um, very eerie production, that would have been so cool. Um, but nonetheless, forty three. SDP interlude. Some people might seem might find it crazy that we're ranking an interlude so high. But this literally is like the musical equivalent of being on DMT or like some crazy psychedelic drug. Even though I don't have experience in those, that's what it feels like sonically. That, the way it that's builds. That's a better analogy. I'll say that's a good analogy. I'll place it in our tier list. Thank you. So a, this is good? It's not great? No, it's a good one. Because uh, you've never done DMT. So like how could I trust your analogy then? But it feels it feels like if I were to take the most psychedelic drug I can think of, this is what, what, what it would sound I, like. You know. I know, but the validity factor is not there. Maybe it bumps up to a great if we did do it but anyways let's keep going on with this next one is going to be 42 mafia um this was dropped a part of like kind of like the dystopia pack that uh was dropped back in i believe 2022 now that i look 21 oh it's true it's 2021 yeah 
Um, regardless, though, still an incredible song. I love the, the production off of it, but let's keep going on with this. 41 is going to be Butterfly Effect, one of the most iconic songs in Travis's catalog, Infectious Melodies. I love the Murder Beats production, and it's actually one of the few songs in his catalog where he's not swearing. So that actually gets like a little plus. I'm not yeah. sure if you noticed that. Yeah, I did. Massive song and um, very simple. It's textbook Travis, but one of his catchiest hooks, and I have to reward him for that. It's e like, e very easy to sing along to. It's maybe one of his most like catchiest songs, karaoke friendly songs, you could say. Um, but number 40 is going to be No Bystanders. And um, man, this song is so thrilling. It's so explosive. The Juice World opening vocals are crazy. Sheck West does his thing with the, with, the, with the Fuck the Club Up. Um, fuck up the club, excuse me, interpolation. Um, just outright banger. Okay. Number 39, Meltdown. So, do um, you think this could have gotten higher or do you think we got to got this I think this place? is perfectically ranked. 39, place. yeah. I mean, it's not sickle mode, but... You were telling me a take on the phone the other day when we were doing the list. Yeah. You were kind of like... I feel like the song falls off after the Drake verse. Do you still feel that way? I, I tend to lose a bit of interest. Like, when, 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 when Travis comes in... And, oh, uh, and gives know, you his man. verse like, well, are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy? Like, <laughs> uh, I don't when, know, when, when the Star Wars sounds start to hit and like the little bits start to hit, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. It really is. So let's keep going on with this. I believe we are currently at 38. This is going to be Apple Pie. Very important song for Travis's catalog, thematically especially. This is a song where I'm like, okay, this could kind of go lower for me. But again, you know how Lou is. Guys, well, I had to vouch. I wanted this like even higher than 38, but this guy wasn't making me have it. So apologies to all the Travis fans that know that this is a top tier Travis Scott song. You know what? Um, uh, well, okay. W what's it better than in, in the next songs that we better have? Better than coming? Meltdown, better than No Bystanders. Um, you're, you're saying above it? Yeah, above it. What well, do you I, I don't want to spoil it. So once we get there, you could ask me. Well, I, I think people are already kind of saying, but like example, look at number 37 now, Beeps in the Trap. It's not better than Beebs. It's be better than Beebs in the Trap, absolutely. In my opinion, you know, production wise, it is in rapping performance wise. I could say, yeah, there's probably better writing wise, on the absolutely. It's a yeah, much but better like, there's it's a one lot of the, like the best written songs and what it means for his career, like him sort of breaking out of like his home and forging his own path. Like this was super crucial to Rodeo and its story, as well as just his narrative as a as an Yeah, artist. he has a couple of songs like that though in his catalog. But let's keep going on he with does. this. Number 36 is gonna be Carousel. Um, now we're going to start to see some big songs. Anything like, well, I feel like we've already gotten there, but as this list continues to progress, we're going to start to see some classics from him. Yeah, Frank uh, Ocean floated on this. Yeah, fucking floated. nutty song. Absolutely. But number 35 is going to be Goosebumps. Um, this was a song that I was vouching for because Lou didn't even want to see this in this placement. And uh, I feel like it is one of the most unique songs in his in his catalog, production-wise, hook-wise, and the iconic Kendrick Lamar feature. So um, that's what we have at number 35. Number 34 I think we both agreed on this one. We couldn't let the prayer go any lower than number 34. This is a perfect placement for it, bro. I think it I mean, is. The, the, I really think it is. This is low-key, like, one of my favorite productions from Travis. When the girl did her thing, it sounds like you're walking into this abandoned church with those, like, very spooky organ riffs. Like, it's a very special beat. And um, I also like that Travis went for the deeper voice. Very unique. Um, and he showed his hunger on it. But number 33, this is a banger that everyone loves. And to me... I think this might be the the song I have the most nostalgia for in terms of Travis's catalog yes. is the pick up the phone. Like you hear this song and you're immediately taken back to summer 16. Absolutely. Fucking nuts, man. The Young like Thug and Quavo feature. It's such a sick banger. It really these is. These were the days where it's like people, are, people, people around us just started to get their licenses. We were bumping this with the windows down in the summer. Like the vibes were just it was immaculate. immaculate, absolutely. It was so fun to bump this. But number 32, this is where Telekinesis is going to place. This is one of the biggest songs off of the album for me as far as like what kind of grew for me. I'm being completely honest because you know how I felt about the song when it first dropped. It wasn't that I wasn't impressed, but I was like, let me let me sit with it a bit. And even now when I go back, man, it is so fucking sick. It's such a great what, song. What bro. a great song, man. I am so happy I got into it. And um, number 32 is a perfect place. Absolutely. But next up, 31, Hyena. Some people call it Hyena. I mean, I've started to call it Hyena. Yeah, because the spelling's all fucked up, but I guess <laughs> it was intentional. Um, this, to me, is an incredible intro from Travis and it really set the tone for Utopia. Could, could you, what? Uh, we were seeing it on the weekend. Okay, could you do the, the, the situation <laughs> we are in? <laughs> There's something fucked Neither up. Neither a good one, nor is it so not blessed. It may change. It may stay the same. <laughs> Crazy. Um, oh, just say, yeah, it's, you know, it's 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 innovative. Bringing in that prog rock sample at the beginning, him rapping his fucking ass off. 
Come on, bro. The situation <laughs> we are in. Oh, fuck. All right, number uh, 30, stargazing. Listen, I had to do some serious vouching for this. I would have had... Well, no, not serious vouching. Just the only change would have been I had hyena above stargazing. That was it. Is it? Was it really the only yeah, one? Yeah, that? that was it. I feel like stargazing is a better intro. We were arguing about it. And I'm like, well, the production's more dynamic. Even going back to the first listening experience is one of the biggest mind fucks on Astroworld because you think the second half is a completely different song. He's still rapping his ass off off, off the second half. The first half, you know, the whole roll they roll like that flow is fucking impeccable so yeah stargazing i i prefer hyena but next up at number 29 we have backyard and this is one where i'm like i love the song it's one of my most played from days before rodeo but if i'm really looking at it like at what his best and most impressive tracks are i would have had it a couple of spots lower that's all you see like i feel like this is you would have had song. it higher no i feel like well this is like a personal favorite for me yeah um but when i look at because obviously like the production is not necessarily the most impressive in his catalog but it's one of the most inspirational travis scott songs like it's him at his absolute hungriest and when we were talking about apple pie i mean you kind of have it here if i'm being completely honest with you talking about absolutely making it talking about chilling with all of his boys you know in one bedroom apartments like it's really it's one of those deep emotional Travis Scott victory lap cuts that I absolutely enjoy still to this day and I still gain inspiration. I don't know, I always from. viewed it as more of like a house party type of song of like him chilling, him having a good time. No, it's like, a huge victory lap of him. Absolutely, it. but I'm saying I'm song. saying when you listen to that mm. song though, you, people treat it as like a song to play at the ox uh, on the ox at a party. Like it's a very um, well, I'm not sure. I've never really heard backyard at a party. At least one of ours. You always get to like the goosebumps or the pick up the phones. The 3500s, which we're going to go to next, let's say at number 28. Yeah, like, let's talk no, about 3500. Is, so, is this too low on the list, in your opinion? I, I, I personally wanted it to see it in the top 20. Yeah. Lou was like, it gets dragged on. And whose verse weren't you a fan of? Was it Futures? Um, it was Travis's himself. Like, I, okay. I love, I love the Travis hook, but I think his verse isn't really top tier in terms of the rest of rodeo and the rest of the catalog but it's a, it's an iconic banger i don't have that many complaints about it i just think there's better songs from 27 up that's really what it is all right let's keep going. um 27 don't play um a great crossover between like pop rock and hip-hop where you get a 1975 sample at the, at the start of it big sean has a killer verse um arguably one of the best songs off of days before rodeo absolutely as well. Oh, right. Number 26 yeah. is Schizo, one of the most layered songs on the whole album. The last um, beat switch is fucking incredible. When he starts, I wished, I wished that could have been a song. That soul sample? Oh, imagine Oof. that would have been a song by itself. Bro. Like going back to Schizo, it's still like one of my favorites off of the album. And Even still Thugger on there with a double time flow. Like, anyways, Nuts. I don't want to get too much into it, but this is one of the most underappreciated songs off Utopia, without a fucking doubt. Top 25, though. Literally. Top 25 now. Okay, Here so we go. 25 is Houston Fornication. Do you feel like this should have gone lower? Why did we make this in the top 25? Um, This is just, again, speaking about underappreciated gems, like this is one of the best songs off of Astral World, and um, it sounds like Travis Scott is so focused and so sharp with his rhymes. And I, I like the idea that the song takes you on a journey of him wanting a mental reset and wanting to find peace, but doing it in, a, in an abrasive way. Um, love all the flows as well. What about you? Is it fairly placed to you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think it's this is one of the more slept on songs off of Astral. <sighs> Definitely. But bro. I think all of these years later, the fans really do appreciate it. But number 24, Modern Jam. So, yes. Lou, speak your piece, my I'm brother. I'm going to speak my piece. When I made my updated top 10 Travis Scott songs list on the audio podcast that we had mentioned at the beginning, I had this at number 10. And I can now admit that some recency bias had played a role in it. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be straight up with it. I still love the song. I think that Tizo Touchdown's um, performance is groundbreaking. I think it's one of the best um, features we've heard in a hip-hop song in a very long time. But that being said, um, you know, it's not the best written Travis Scott song. And um, yeah, there, there's definitely songs that are better. 23 of them in Travis's catalog. Whenever a man could admit to his mistakes, Absolutely. we always take W's. But let's keep going on with this. Next one is I Can Tell. Um, this is a big one for me, man. I love this song, even message-wise. It's so motivational, and it's always been one of my favorites off of Rodeo. So do you think that this was one that could have maybe cracked into the top 20? Absolutely, bro. Like, in terms of, like... Travis projecting his voice. This is one of his like strongest vocal performances ever, bro. One of his best ever hooks as well. Absolutely. He just he's totally unhinged, bro, on this song. So um absolutely love it. Number 22 is gonna be Quintana Part Two. And this is one of his best ever beats, bro. Like when you listen to like the electric synths, it sounds so sounds like sick. you're listening to like rhythm of a dancer or some shit. The rhythm is a dancer, excuse me. Top five song off of DBR for sure. 
All right, number twenty-one. Finessing, yeah, finessing. Um, twenty-one antidote. What is there to say? It's it's the, it's, the it's classic like, party banger from Travis. Do you think it's his most iconic party banger? Well, it was kind of the song that like put him on, put him on. We had seen. I don't know if you watched it together, but like it was a performance in Germany or something of this song, and like people were like fucking jumping off of platforms. Like, bro, it was one of the wildest sets I've ever seen. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, this song gets people fucking going. That's for sure. All right, and number twenty is going to be Nightcrawler. Some people might say that this is too low. For Nightcrawler, but I think a top twenty placement's fucking decent, if you ask me. I like Chief Keef going into like Travis's world with like the the auto tuning, and um, we said how Anado was his best party banger. This is his best club song. You in think my so? Opinion. In terms of a song from Travis, you want to hear in the club? This fits perfectly. You don't think? I'm looking at the list right now. Yeah, Ant's putting on the glasses and uh, the microscope. I just want to see if that's <laughs> a good take. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Th- Low that's, key, eh? that's decent. Low yeah, key, yeah, right? for sure. Fuck yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah. But like a party song and like a, a club, club song, song go hand in hand. Yeah, I know what you mean. I guess yeah. I could, I, you could probably say that this is some of his best like best ever bangers. But okay, nineteen. Thank God. So, arguably one of the best songs off of Utopia. So, what made you want to put this over Modern Jam? Let's say all of these months later after release, was it something in the production you heard? Was it something within Travis's performance? Like it's Travis's performance, bro. Okay. Like he sounded so motivated on here. Like it feels like a redemption track where he's like rapping about like not wanting to be overlooked and how he's gonna deliver under all the pressure. Like it sounded like he went to fucking war on this song, and even the unsettling xylophone notes and keys, just production wise incredible but number 18 through the late night um we've spoken about this song a lot i enjoy the extended kid cuddy hums um i would have had it maybe a bit lower i think i think songs like thank god and nightcrawler are better um but that's just me i had to fight for this one yeah. ladies and gentlemen i had to fight for this one i wasn't gonna let lou do this to me you know <laughs> hell of a night got mistreated by lou but i had to step in and i had to say okay no no, no we're not gonna put this we, we can't we can't it's their best ever collaboration it's just no, like, it's not. We have a we have another. Oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah, we have another one. Bad. It's it's their second best ever collaboration. You know, fucking incredible. One of the best songs. All right, off of um, number seventeen, Coffee Bean. This might be ranked high this for us. Yeah, but I fucking love. It. I don't. Care. I love it. I don't care. I don't care how fucking high this is ranked. People could complain all they want. I love seeing this at seventeen. How often do you get songs like this where like he's really meditative? He wants to get shit off his chest and be like super personal. Absolutely. Like super, super personal. And of course, the old school funk guitar can go wrong. 16 can't say. W place. I wasn't expecting to have it this high when we were, when we first made the list, like from scratch. I'm like, is can't say really going to go like yeah, top 16? I still listen to this song. Whenever I hear that Don Tolliver verse, I'm like, wow. Special. That is, that is an all-time performance. Number 15, Sicko Mode. And this song truly is just as insane as it was back in 2018. It I don't is. give a fuck how many times it's been played. Um, when you're looking at it at face value... This is truly one of his best ever songs, bro. Oh, absolutely. All the production switches, all the flow switches. It really is one of the best songs in his So catalog. grandiose. Number 14, Pray for Love. So this is The weekend and Travis's best ever collaboration. And, you know, you get an incredible hook from The weekend. You get these very deeply written verses from Travis. It's easily one of the best off of Rodeo. That's going to place at 14. 13, My Eyes. I'm cool with this. You know? Yeah, so I think you had it. Where was it? Was it number 10 was in your updated 10? list? Yeah, so this is good. It's only three lower. I, I still stand my ground on this song, man. I think it's one of the best ever Travis Scott songs I've ever heard. I think this is one of those songs where it's like you literally turn the knob from zero to 100. Like it starts That's off I'm... as one as one thing and it turns into a completely different entity on its own. It, like it's this is, it's, it's just so iconic for the album. It's easily the best song yeah. off of there. Um, so. Number 12, Impossible. This is a song that I had to fight for. I originally well, had it. Hey, 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 hey. You didn't have to like fight for it. Absolutely. Like we have it at 12. Like I, I'm, I'm saying like, but I had it at three in my own list, just to say. That's very true. Like to me, this is one of the mo- the best emotive Travis performances. Like you could tell that he had his heart fucking crushed. Um, I love the um, vocals from Alan Ritter. Like the creativity of getting your producer doing these high pitched vocals um, to end off a song. Um, it just it sounds like he's going towards like a downward spiral. And again, his ability to convey emotion was perfect here. Eleven Astro Thunder. I had to fight for this one. Not really. I would have had it maybe like a couple lower, but I love the song. Yeah, what I know, I had this in his top three in the top three originally. Really? I, I thought to a top five maybe. 
It was there though. Anyways, it was there. But yeah, Lou want Lou didn't want to see it in the top ten. Lou didn't want to see me win, so I had to. Lou doesn't want to see me. I win was ever. rooting for Ant's downfall <laughs> during the making of this. She knows how much I absolutely love this song. But okay, let's get into the top ten, ladies and gentlemen. And so this is a combined ranking. How different does this list, let's say, look to your original one? I think the placements are off for me, but most of these songs are like absolute locks. I, I feel really good about a lot of these picks. Like, yeah, like, like, like we've been debating over some of them, but pretty, pretty solid. I Number be, ten, yeah, top ten, baby, Mamacita, Mamacita, and this is one yeah. that like it really climbed the ranks with more re-listens. To be honest with you, I mean that twangy guitar sound that you hear to kick things off. One of the most iconic instruments you'll ever hear in a Travis Scott beat. Absolutely, um, the the chemistry between him, Homie Quan, and Thug. This is really a DBR classic, it if really I've ever is. heard one. Um, but number nine, The Ends. Um, brilliant song, bro. It is brilliant. a brilliant song. I th- is it? No, it's it's one of the best ever features on a Travis Scott album. Andre For 3K's sure. verse is one of the best ever in his catalog. So I will say that. Um, I just love the messaging of it. I love the way that he starts off the song itself. I'm a big fan of the production. So number nine. Number eight, Way Back. Um, kind of feels like another song that we're going to get into very soon. But it just beautiful beautiful track especially for the second beat switch just such an incredible song feels like one of the most complete mm-hmm. travis scott songs in his career absolutely you get the crooning the hardcore rapping you get everything um number seven r.i.p screw um What's this is what to love about this song man i still go back to it and it's just so sick to listen to um it really does feel like because travis is obviously trying to like you know emulate the feeling of being off like being off of lean and you know everything kind of being slowed down and you know him getting personal with it it's such a creative you know song concept when you look for travis's catalog so number seven is an extremely fair placement number six oh my this side should come as no surprise um a song that was both featured in our list kind of like way back you know it's cool because you get a perspective switch from travis on the song itself another beat switch one of the best ever is it his best two-part song let me see what else we have above here no it's not Oh, yeah, no. no it's obviously not. not. Actually, yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously not. not. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Jeez, that's a fucking question. Um, no, but it, it's, it's up there. Number five is going to be Maria, I'm Drunk. This is one of the best song concepts that, that Travis has ever come up with. Um, this is Young Thug's best ever feature, in my opinion, best period. Best ever? Best ever. Like, he's a vocal acrobat. That's what I always like to, to say I about his like performance. I never like to see the Maria, I'm Drunk slander in live streams. And Something. it's the, the surprise of getting the JB rapping uh, Absolutely. performance. All right, number you four. Think, you, see, see, you see Slander from Maria, I'm Drunk? You don't remember? We got Super Chats about it's this. True, it's so true. They're like, oh, you guys overrate the fuck out of it. No fucking way. <laughs> Go back and listen, bro. <laughs> number four, Skeletons. So uh, this is one that I was pushing hard for because, uh, well, I have it in my top 10, though. Like, I, I, yeah, I was true. okay. A- anything at this point is just incredible, you know? So this is definitely one of them. Actually, is this the... So technically, it's not the best. On Asheworld, no, it's not. No, it's not. All right, let's keep going Second on. best on Asheworld. Yeah. To us. All right. Number keep... three, Drugs, You Should Try It. I mean... People know. People know about this one, bro. People know about this the one. The vocal doubling I think, I that think, persists. I think, the top, I think the top three, everyone will be pleased this with. This is the epitome of like psychedelic Travis, is I, Drugs, absolutely. You Should Try It, you know? And also kind of maybe the start, you could say. Yeah. Catalog, so it's, catalog like, it's like one. that when you're like, oh, okay, like... He's using his voice as an instrument. Like, like that's sort of the purpose of his artistry. And there's always, you like, know? one of these songs on a Travis album. Yeah. So. Um, number, number two and number one, we've spoken about these so many times. So um, Stop Trying to Be God is obviously going to be number two. Um, shout out to that fucking harmonica. And number one is going to be 90210. So. Self-explanatory. Kind of like, I, I, yeah, I don't even know. It no, would no, be no. disrespectful to even talk about it for how great it is. Like, just let it do its thing, guys. Listen to 90210 for some fucking screwed up reason you haven't up to this yeah. point. Um, but listen, let's talk about the list as a whole, bro. I mean, I went through 97 it. It songs. It was hard to rank. This was I, very I, I, hard I'm not going to hide. The, the, the reason why we don't do these episodes very often is because, like, first of all, Lou and I have to come together and we have to take, like, legit, I think. Hours, um, hours, Yeah, and we hours. worked hours on the list, just going back and forth with everything. You got to re listen to the whole discography. Um, and you got to have to be a bit of an asshole with it. Like, where am I going to place what? And then you got to go back to the list, ask certain questions. Well, oh, this is ranked too low. Is this song really better than this one? So. Listen, guys, there, there's probably improvements that could be made with this list, but at the end of the day, I'm a proud father. Uh, l- let me ask you yeah. this. like, um, Going through Travis's whole catalog, like, do you really think that his best is yet to come? Because looking at how diverse, let's say, like the top three are, they all come from like different eras and different 
time periods in his career. Yes, bro. but you could see like what works best for him. It's definitely the psychedelic like, That's production. True. Looking at skeletons, drugs, stop, and you know, nine oh two one oh. It's all like that euphoric psychedelic sort of sound and um him experimenting with his vocals. So I'd love to see more of that in the future. Yeah, know? I think it would be great to to have, let's say, a full psychedelic album that sees him going to new lengths. But um we had up on the screen guys the summary of our lists. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode from start to finish. Thank you for staying up until the end. And let us know down in the comments which catalog and artist should we do this for next. Thank you guys so much for watching this. And we'll see you soon. Peace.